In this video, we will take a look at five common Photoshop mistakes that you should stop doing right now. So let's get started. Hey, what's up guys, Drew here. And as you can see, this is not a regular Photoshop tutorial. It's more like a tips and tricks video. This is something that I wanted to do for a long time. I want to make it a series. So please share your thoughts in the comment section below what you think about it. And now let's look at the mistakes. Mistake number one using low quality images now this is for the people who are new to photoshop who come into beginner category they don't actually understand concept of resolution and end up using really low quality photos that just don't look good not only that but when i zoom into this photo you can see little boxes those boxes are known as pixels and those pixels actually help photoshop to make automatic selections so when you use that quick selection tools photoshop photoshop is literally using those little boxes to determine what to select so more pixels you have the easier it is for photoshop to do its job and it is extremely important when you're trying to select something like hair or fur you see using low resolution photographs is bad but combining low resolution and high resolution is even worse you see the main reason beginners and intermediates end up doing this is because of the transformation tools they look at the small photographs and think that ah, i can just simply press ctrl t and make it bigger well you can but it will show for sure like you, it will be noticeable when you stretch a low resolution image little too much so avoid using low resolution image as much as possible Mistake number two is not using adjustment layers for color correction. Now, if you have ever seen any of my tutorials where I do some sort of color correction, you know that how much I love adjustment layers. I use them all the time. Now, beginners, and actually in this situation, I have seen a lot of people who use Photoshop for many years. They still do it. They go to image, they go to adjustment, and then they do whatever adjustment they want to do on their photographs. But problem with this method is that in case you save your file and close the Photoshop, it's gone you cannot undo it uh, on the other hand in adjustment layers you can just simply delete the adjustment layer if you don't like it not only that but you can also use blending modes with your adjustment layers for example if i want to make this photo darker i can just simply go to my adjustment layers select levels and now without changing anything in levels i can go and change the blend mode of layer to multiply and the photo is darker how convenient and flexible is that also, every single adjustment layer comes with a mask. So in case if you don't want effect in certain portion, you can simply mask it out. So use adjustment layers wherever possible. Number three, not naming and grouping your layers properly. Now again, this seems like common sense, but this is not something that a lot of people don't know, but this is something that people don't do because of their laziness. Normally it starts like this. You start your project, you're like, yeah, I'll name it later, I'll name it later. Okay, I'm gonna name it after a couple of minutes. And then you realize that you've been working for five hours, so you have 50 layers and you haven't named anything. If you wanna look at the example, look at this project. I did not name anything and I worked entire day on this project. Now, if I want to change anything, I'm done. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to go turn on and off eye of every single layer to find out what I want to change. On the other hand, look at example on this file. Again, we have lots of layers, but I actually grouped everything and I named everything. So if I want to change something, I can just directly jump into that folder and change it. So it's not something that people don't know. It's just that people don't do it. Number four, using Photoshop where it does not belong. Now this is mainly for the people who are more into graphic design and not in photo editing. Listen, if your main target is to create logos or let's say you work a lot of with typography or you do a lot of print media work, start learning something like Illustrator or Corel Draw because Photoshop is not the software for you. If you like it, use it as your secondary software. Photoshop is not good for vector. Yes, you can create vector artworks in Photoshop, but it's not convenient. That's the issue. Vector options in Photoshop are more for the people who mainly do photo editing and when once in a while they need to work with something vector, they can do it. If your main target is to work with vector all day long, learn Illustrator or Corel or whatever vector software provides you better user interface. Number five, not combining selection tools and always rushing pen tool. Now this is specifically for intermediates. 
You see, learning Pentel is pain in the ass. Everyone knows it. And when intermediates, they get really good grip on it, they start using it everywhere without realizing if they actually need it or not. Not only that, but a lot of people actually don't combine their selection tools. You see, in this photo, no matter how hard I tried, I could not get it done with just using quick selection tool. So what I did, I used my quick selection tool as much as I could. Then for this portion, I switched to my magnetic lasso tool and then I finished my selection. Sometimes it might seem that you need pen tool, but you probably don't. So I hope that you find at least one of this advice useful and if you did, Hit that like button and if you have any more questions or if you have any suggestions feel free to ask me in comment section below. If you want to check out more of my Photoshop tutorials, I have lots of them. You can visit my channel and if you are interested in my upcoming videos, you can click on that subscribe button. So till then, goodbye, take care and have some fun with Photoshop.